here with longtime NFL reporter John Clayton. John, we're interested in getting a national perspective. I know that you're up in the Seattle area, but what's the thoughts from there on the Denver Broncos? Well, I think more positive now because of his experience at the quarterback position. I mean, Trevor Simeon looked like it was going to go okay. Then, unfortunately, it just did not work out. I think in Case Keenum, you bring in an experienced quarterback who's had great success, shows great leadership. I know Simeon had great leadership, too. But I think, you know, it's just an upgrade in that sense. The fact that he was able to get into the playoffs, be successful in the playoffs, and have the kind of year, I think it's a good fit. Well, you think it was good for John to move on from Kirk Cousins, the whole hoopla around him, and go straight to Case Keenum? Yeah, because, again, if you don't get the one, you get the other, but if they're both good choices. And of course, I mean, you know, Kirk uh, ends up getting, you know, a great deal and probably, you know, this is a little bit better deal getting it uh, $18 million a year to get the deal for the Denver Broncos. But again, I think that, I mean, you get one or the other and then you say, okay, let's try to continue to build. And of course, I like the move to get Gerald Valdir at the right tackle position because again, he's got experience. He can play left, he can play right. A couple years ago, I mean, he was a Pro Bowl alternate at left tackle. Mm -hmm. Uh, a lot of talk about the Broncos' fifth pick here. Do right, you think they'll go quarterback or elsewhere? And, you know, I kind of wonder, going both ways, you know, I think it depends on what quarterback is going to be available. Because, for example, you know, and this is just me talking, this not knowing anything from John Elway, I think he'd be really intrigued with Allen. Because now you're talking about, uh, you know, a big arm. They don't have to rush him. I mean, if it takes two years, it takes two years. But, I mean, boy, the upside on him looks fantastic. I mean, I know going back and watching the, co the quarterback works out at the combine, I mean, there's a lot that reminds you of Carson Wentz. And, again, I know his accuracy needs to improve. But, again, it's like he's a guy that you can develop and a guy you can work with. I mean, big, strong, and all that. I don't know if it's the same with Baker Mayfield. I don't know if it's the same with Josh Rosen. But I think if Jared Allen's sitting there, I mean, Josh Allen's sitting there at five, that's got to be a consideration. Well, you see him throwing those 80-yard passes. you got to look at him. Uh, John, I know that you're a Hall of Fame voter on the Contributors Committee. Do you feel like this might be the year that Pat Bowling gets the nod? Yeah, I think so. I mean, because he's been so close. I mean, even two years ago, it was really close that he almost uh, was able to get into the room and get the yes and no vote. I think uh, particularly now, it goes back to a couple, no, two. I think there's a great chance he gets in. Uh, what do you feel like his lasting impact? I know we've talked about this before, but his impact really on the league and on the Broncos? Well, twofold, because, I mean, number one, I mean, he's he established such a great organization in Denver, where it's not just an organization is always competing for the playoffs, it's competing for the Super Bowl. I mean, that's been the tradition that he's been able to set up. I mean, the fact that he's able to do a model thing in, you know, just having the football people having all the resources to get what they want. That's number one. But number two, how he's been involved in the TV contracts. Because I know, for example, you know, when Jerry Jones got in, I mean, he gets a lot of credit for it. But a lot of it had to be what Pat set up, being on the broadcast committee and getting that advanced as much as it is. You throw that together with what he's done with the franchise, I mean, he should be a contributor Hall of Famer. Winning always came first for Mr. B. Uh, I know you had your uh, special day in Pennsylvania. Uh, what was that like getting honored, uh, the John Clayton Day? It was just so weird because, again, it's like, I mean, I grew up and it was a tough town and all that stuff. But to go back there for a couple speeches that I had to do and then all of a sudden get called over by some of the people I grew up with and haven't seen in like four decades and having a day named after me in Braddock, PA on March 18th was phenomenal. I mean, the funny part about it was I know that the mayor got word to me. It's like they were going to give me the key to the city, but somebody <laughs> stole it. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, that's a pretty cool honor. Uh, where can fans find you? I know you've been doing a lot of the serious stuff, too. Yeah, in fact, I was on Sirius this past week. I know coming up, I think on the 8th of April, I'm going to be on there. But again, I'm the main fill and I'm moving the chains. And so when you know Jim Miller gets a well-deserved day off or Pat Kerwin, who never takes a day off, I'm there and I'm looking forward to it. I think I'll be here at a bunch in April. <laughs> All right, John. Well, we appreciate you joining us here.